I'm Sam Vaknin, and I'm the author of Malignant Self-Love, Narcissism Revisited. The composer Giuseppe Verdi was born in 1813 and died in 1901. Like Puccini, his career did not start auspiciously. Coming from a tiny hamlet, the son of an innkeeper and a farmer, Giuseppe was snootily rejected by the Milan Conservatory due to his advanced age and poor playing of the piano. He thus had to take private lessons from a Milanese composer, Vincenzo Lavinia. His second opera, King for a Day, was a flop. When his wife and two children died, Giuseppe gave up composing altogether. Luckily, the director of La Scala, the Milanese opera house, succeeded to convince him to rescind his vow. The result was Nabucco in 1842. The opera was so adored that it was still playing in Buenos Aires and St. Petersburg a decade later. As opposed to nostalgic rewriting of history, not least by Verdi himself, the fact is that the opera's subject matter, the Babylonian captivity of the Jews, was not meant to allude to the subjugation of the Italian people to Austrian rule. Only after Italy was unified in 1861 did Verdi propagate the apocryphal story of how he snapped out of his depression when the libretto fell and opened in the chorus Va Pensiero, that is the song of the enslaved Hebrews. The new nation of Italy needed heroes, and Verdi was recruited, his earlier work deliberately misinterpreted and recast as subversively anti-Austrian and nationalistic. There followed a series of successful operas, such as Rigoletto in 1851, Il Trovatore in 1853, and La Traviata in 1853 as well. These brought him international acclaim. When the Suez Canal was completed, the Khedive of Egypt commissioned Aida in 1871 to celebrate the opening of the waterway. Verdi's dream was to retire early as a gentleman farmer, to land he purchased in 1844. He reluctantly served as member of the Chamber of Deputies after the unification of Italy in 1861, but soon resigned. He did finally settle down in 1873 and became a very wealthy landowner. Like Puccini, Verdi lived out of wedlock with a common-law wife of a musical agent, the prima donna Giuseppina Streponi. When she met Verdi, she already had three children, the oldest of whom was being reared by her former maid. Verdi refused to allow her to accompany him on official travels, due to the scandal that swirled around their relationship. Moreover, he had at least one documented affair with the fiancé of his best friend, Angelo Mariani. Her name was Teresa Stolz, and she was a soprano opera singer. He loved her so much that she was even allowed to attend his deathbed. Verdi was a very unpleasant and cantankerous person. He was known for his litigi litigiousness, his evasiveness, his vindictiveness, reversals, and constant bickering. He frequently clashed with censors due to the bold subject matter and librettos of his operas, but he gave rise to so much beauty that his personal foibles are all but forgotten now.